In this episode, we talk about how to build your credit score. Get excited because this is Tiny Leaps. Big change. Welcome to another episode of Tiny Leaps big changes where I share simple strategies you can use to get more out of your life. My name is Greg Clunas and in this episode we're talking about credit. We want to talk about how to improve our credit score, how to build our credit, and how to keep a strong credit score. Now we're going to be revisiting this topic over time because there is so much to it. Uh, There are entire books and uh, research articles and just just so much in the world of credit, especially here in the United States. It's kind of an insane world. Um, It's truly an insane topic when you really think about it. But we're going we're gonna to revisit that. In today's episode, we're just looking at four very simple steps to build that credit from wherever you are uh, towards where you want to be. Now, I can't promise that you'll get there. That has everything to do with effort and less to do with strategy. Um, but I can promise that if you do these things, you will move forward on it. So the first step on this, the first thing, and I know this is going to sound like fluffy, but... I say it all the time, you cannot, you cannot make progress on something if you're not, if you don't understand why, right? If you don't understand why, why it's important, why you need to make progress on it. So that's the first step here. You have to first understand why your credit is so important. Now, the reason I'm emphasizing this so much, the reason I put it at number one is because this was my problem for a long time. Right. I always I grew up with this idea uh, being an immigrant here, moving to this country. There is this like idea of like the American dream, right, of coming here, working hard, making it big, getting rich, like all of that stuff. Right. I, I grew up with that in mind. And by the way, I still plan on doing that. I still fully intend on getting to that point. But something that was dangerous along the way, something that I adopted. And and this is one of the things that honestly, like I talk all the time on this show that I started it to be sort of the anti-personal development uh, place, right? The anti-guru place. This is one of the lessons that, excuse my language, pissed me off the most from these gurus because there are a lot of very rich people out there who give you the advice that you should just screw your credit. That you don't need your credit. Pay for everything cash. Now, here's the problem. At least in the U.S., I can't speak for any other country. At least in the U.S., without a good credit score, you are going to pay more money for any loans that you do ever have to take out. That's if you even get approved. Second, you are very unlikely to get approved. (laughs) Like, you just... Like, they just won't give you the money. Like, you need to go to college? Too bad. You don't have credit. We can't trust you. You need to rent this apartment? Too bad. We can't trust that you're going to pay the rent. Like, credit plays a role in everything. You can't get a car without it. You can't, in some cases, you can't get a phone plan. You can't get, like, a T-Mobile plan without a credit score, without a credit check going into that. You can't apply for jobs without your credit getting checked. Credit is rolled into everything. Having a good, strong, healthy credit score matters for far more than just taking out loans. Because unfortunately, in this country, when it comes to transactions, credit is the only means of determining trust. It's the only way of recognizing, can we trust them to actually pay us this money or not? So credit is important From that point of view, even if you don't plan on using credit cards, even if you don't plan on taking out loans, even if you maybe don't even care about buying a house, you still need credit. So the first step is you have to recognize that. There are plenty of people out there teaching you to just ignore your credit, just focus on increasing your income, just focus on like whatever bullshit, right? Like there are plenty of people out there giving you that advice. And trust me when I tell you that advice screwed me far more than it ever helped me. Yeah, maybe I did focus on my income and now I'm doing good on that side, but my credit, I mean, it's still not great. It's getting better, but it's still not great. 
you shouldn't have to start from 400 like I did. Like that's it's just not worth it. It's not worth having to crawl your way out because you can make as much money as you like. Some places just straight up don't take cash. I'm serious. Like you can you could become a multimillionaire, have a ton of money flowing in, horrible credit, and in your mind you can say, "You know what? Well, I'm just going to buy this house cash." Some places just won't let you do that. Like, they just will not allow it without a credit score. Like, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's wild. I'm not saying the system is right, but it is important and it does matter. So, number one is recognize the value of your credit. Recognize the value of that score and why it's so incredibly important to keep it good and get it good if it's not currently. Now, step number two in this, again, fairly straightforward, is to understand your score, right? Now, you know what is valuable. You know why it's valuable. Uh, but you don't, you you now need to recognize what does this number actually mean? Where do I fall in with the rest of the country? How much higher am I going to be paying in things like interest rate at the number I'm at now versus, let's say, a higher number, right? Doing that research and understanding what your credit score actually means is extremely valuable because it allows you to set targets. It allows you to understand, okay, I'm here. I want to get here. And that's a reasonable, this is a reasonable amount of time to do that. Learning the credit system lets you uh, uh, recognize that. And what I'm going to do is I have a few different articles. I'm going to link to them in the description of this episode. I recommend that you read them. They do a good job explaining what the credit system is like, at least in the United States. Again, I cannot speak for any other country because I I don't have credit there. Um, But at least in the United States, these articles will help you to wrap your head around how credit works, and that should allow you to get a basic understanding. The second step after that is you then need to look at your own score, and I recommend tools like creditkarma.com. Uh, Mint.com also has a uh, credit tool within it, and many of many of the banks also have partnerships. So I know, for example, like Chase.com, when I log in, it has a partnership with a, a different credit platform that will check stuff for me. Uh, Capital One has CreditWise. I don't know if they own them or if it's a partnership, but your bank probably has some kind of setup that can give you access to your score. So doing that and, and recognizing what your current score is and then also doing that external reading to understand what the system is like will give you the knowledge you need to uh, move forward and and recognize what can work. Now, when we get back, we're going to look at the last two steps of increasing your credit score. So stick around for that. How would you feel if you saved an extra $1,500 this year without lifting a finger? That's exactly what Empower can help you do. It's really difficult to save as much money as we need to because as soon as we get extra money, it gets spent. We do the best we can with our budgets and apps to track spending, but somehow it just still doesn't work. Well, there's an app for that. It's called Empower. That's E-M-P-O-W-E-R. It's an awesome mobile app that makes saving and managing your money the easiest thing that you'll do all day. For starters, Empower has an automated savings feature. You simply tell the app your weekly savings target, and every day, Empower studies your income and spending and automatically knows when to move the right amount of money into your savings account, where you're less likely to spend it. It's called autosave. Just set it and forget it. And now, you can stop Googling for answers to all of your finance questions. You can just text Empower's human coaches who give you personalized recommendations and they're on standby to steer you through whatever financial challenge might come up in your life. If you want to save $1,500 more this year, you've got to check out the Empower app. Download Empower, that's E-M-P-O-W-E-R, in the App Store or Play Store. Over 650,000 other people already have. And if you start today, listeners of this show actually have a special offer. You can get $5 for free, $5 when you use the offer code TINYLEAPS and to reach your savings goal. So to claim that $5 offer, 
head over to empower.me slash tiny leaps and use the offer code tiny leaps. Okay, we are back. We're talking about how to increase your credit score. And step number three is to understand what your weak areas are, right? So whatever your score is right now, there is a reason it's that and not something higher. Now, that reason might be something out of your control, like credit history, right? That's a big part of determining what your score ends up being is how long has this person had credit for? And if, you, if you're young, if you just turned 18 or, or whatever age you're able to get a credit card, you might not have any credit history. And that's outside of your control. There's nothing you can do about that. All you can do is stay alive. That's it. Stay alive and keep having credit. That's the only thing that will help that situation. But that doesn't change it from still being a weak area, right? If that's your weak area, you still need to know that. And you still need to recognize, okay, if I'm doing everything else right, then as I get older, my score will go up because my only weak area is the age, the age of my credit history. For many of us, that's not the only weak area, though. Sometimes it's on-time payments. What is your percentage of on-time payments? If it's anything below, I believe, 99%, anything below that is going to hurt you. Like That puts you into a poor or average uh, category. And this is different based on the the company that's reporting the score and whatever, right? There's a lot of factors involved, but I think anything below 99% is typically not considered not good. So if that's your issue, if that's the weak point, that's what's dragging your score down, then you need to fix that. You need to make sure everything is better going forward. The goal here is very simple. You need to understand what your weak point is. What is the thing that's stopping your score from being higher? What is stopping you from being where you need to be? Because the truth is, you don't need to make a lot of money in order to have great credit. Like, you don't. Does it help? Absolutely. But I know plenty of people who barely scrape by income-wise and have phenomenal credit. I also know plenty of people who make a ton of money and have awful credit. It's about managing the credit, not necessarily about the amount of money coming in. It's about understanding the system and building a strategy around that system, recognizing what your potential points of failure are. Because the thing with credit, and this is one of the worst parts of it, when you screw up, it stays with you. When you go 90 days delinquent on a payment or something like that, that stays on there for like seven years. There's nothing you can do after that. It's just there for the next seven years. Now, over time, the effect it has decreases dramatically, but it there's still an effect. So controlling things, recognizing what your potential weak points are, and understanding what you can do to fix that, that allows you to avoid the negative things from ever happening so that you don't have to deal with the long-term effect. And then finally, the fourth piece of advice on how to improve your credit score is uh, a little bit more practical. Put everything on auto pay. I know that's scary. I know plenty of people that maybe live by like the envelope system or or whatever method you use, uh, just put everything on auto pay. What I've done to make this easier for me, because I I tried to do this in the past uh, in college, and I struggled basically to remember when things were going to come out. And so I had all these different dates, and that was screwing up as far as money not being there when it needed to be, uh, but then being available the next day, so then I'd get an overdraft fee. Like, it just... It wasn't working. What I did to finally make this work was I called every single company that I was paying anything out to monthly, put it on auto pay, and then I got them to change the payment date. And I did two separate payment dates, the 1st and the 15th. So everything, everything comes out of my accounts on the 1st or the 15th. So I know for a fact I need to have X amount of money in my bank account on the 1st. And I need to have X amount of money in my bank account on the 15th. That also allows me to project out, am I going to have that money? Do I need to borrow money? Like following that system, putting everything on auto pay allows you to make sure you never forget to make a payment ever. Like ever, because the bank will do it for you, right? It's, It's automatic. So you'll never miss another payment. You'll never go delinquent on anything. The hardest part of that is making sure the money's in the account the day it needs to be there so you don't get overdraft fees or payments don't get declined. Easiest way to fix that, move all your payments to one or two dates. That way you know exactly when the money needs to be there. And your entire focus for the month can just be 
making sure that the money's there for that date. That's it. Now, obviously, there are some things in there that uh, maybe are a little bit harder to deal with, like groceries or like anything where you, you actually have to like swipe. But even that, you can still build around those other dates, right? If you know the 1st and the 15th, you need to have X amount in your accounts to pay all of your auto pay bills. Maybe your grocery dates end up falling on those days, or maybe they fall in the weeks in between. Whatever system works for you. The point is, if you can organize your spending around specific dates, you'll never have to worry about, do I have the money in on that date? Or forgetting that a payment is going to come out and then getting screwed because of it. Using this system gives you full control over what goes in and what comes out of your accounts. And keeping that control allows you to do all the other things we talked about to increase your score over time. So I hope this was helpful to you. Like I said, we're going to be diving into more credit-based episodes because it is such an important piece of the puzzle. And I, I mean, I personally struggle with it. I know many of you probably do as well. Uh, let me know what you want to hear about next. I'd love to do more personal finance topics. So if you have a specific thing you want me to cover, drop a comment over on the YouTube at youtube.com slash Greg Clunas. Find this episode, drop a comment. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've been Greg Clunas. Be sure to click subscribe wherever you're consuming this. And remember that all big changes come from the tiny leaps you take every day.